When it comes time to do a video on a home computer system from the early 1980s, we can always be sure of getting an interesting history lesson. The computer industry back then was much like the first few seconds of the Kentucky Derby, with baseball bats and slingshots allowed. Atari made it pretty far but with TI and Commodore in a price war so intense that they were willing to take a loss on hardware to stay on top of the market, companies like Atari struggled to keep their footing, even with their very capable designs. The Atari 600 XL we're going to be looking at today is actually the low-end version of Atari's 800 XL, a computer we've previously covered. Combined, these systems represent Atari's most successful attempt at cornering the home computer market. Hey guys, it's Jacob with Tech Retrospective, and today we are going to be taking a look at this Atari 600 XL. Internally, the 600 XL is similar to the Atari 400 it replaced, which, like all of Atari's original 8-bit systems, was praised for its graphic and sound capabilities. When the 600 XL was released in late 1983, it was largely able to keep pace with the Commodore 64 released the previous year. But such performance was old news for Atari. I'm going to be discussing this system assuming you already understand the basic architecture of the Atari 8-bit line. If not, check out our videos on the original 800 and the 800 XL to be up to speed. When they were released in 1979, the 400 and 800 were the leaders in terms of graphic and sound performance at the time because Atari employed technology from its dedicated game consoles in its home computer systems. The architecture they came up with for this computer was quite non-native. The Atari 8-bit computers were the first home computers to use coprocessors to enhance the computer's power beyond just the power of the 6502 processor. By the early 1980s, it was clear that the 400 and 800 needed to be replaced, the main reason being reducing costs something we went into more detail in our 800 video. They also wanted to expand on the features of the already strong platform they had built. The result was a low-cost home computer architecture that remained competitive all the way until 1992, with only minor changes needed to sustain it. That's not to say nothing about it changed. In 1982, Atari started the Liz New York project, to deal with the changing industry and pricing climate. The intended results of Liz New York were supposed to be two systems with a few significant changes to overall performance. The 1000 and the 1000X, as they were known, were designed to support expansion cards similar to those used in the Apple II, and they would have been housed in significantly larger cases. What came of the project was the XL series. The 1200 XL was released in early 1983, and it had problems. It did have some improvements to color quality, a new keyboard with special function keys, and built-in self-diagnostics. The PBI, or parallel bus interface, had been planned, but wasn't implemented for the 1200 XL. Critics found it to be far too expensive, particularly compared to offerings from TI and Commodore. Also, the SIO connector, which is a predecessor to USB, had the 12-volt pin disconnected, causing compatibility problems with older game controllers and hardware. Another significant change in 83 was the relocation of Atari's computer manufacturing from California to Hong Kong. While the 1000 and 1000X designs were dropped before making it to production, the concepts of the Liz New York project would appear in the systems that followed. The 600XL and 800XL were announced at Summer CES in 1983. They were smaller and lighter than the 1200XL. The 600XL was the smallest, mostly because it only had 16 kilobytes of RAM, while the larger 800 had 64K, plus an S-video output. If it seems strange that anyone would want to build a system with only 16K of RAM, even back in 1983, that's because it is 
but originally the 1000X was supposed to be a starter system for a larger, more modular configuration. The 1000 was a budget model. These two systems were what finally became of Liz New York. But as you might expect, most people just wanted to grab one and start playing the exciting games on the scene at the time, which explains why the 800XL was Atari's best seller and not the 600XL. If you don't have a simple cost-effective upgrade path, then the system with the most useful configuration out of the box is going to be the better choice. The XL series stuck around until 1986, when it was replaced by the XE series. From the perspective of a retro computer buyer, either system could be everything you need, particularly if you have some technical ability. It's possible to expand even a little 600 XL to run 256K. That's more than games ever required, so this little one could be a deal, particularly if you don't need the extra video output. We picked up our 600XL for $140 in the box with manuals, catalogs, power supply, and some accessories for attaching video devices. It was listed as opened, but unused, and that appears to be accurate. The box was mangled up, but the machine itself is like new. Looking closely at the 600XL, it has a very solid feel to it, and the touch of the keyboard seems a little light. It is obviously a massive step up from the membrane keyboard of the 400. The XL series also features function keys, which are intended to make the statement to new frightened computer users that Atari's got your back, so to speak. It is, of course, a family system, so it has a cartridge slot for games. The right side of the system houses the two 9-pin controller ports, the back is where you'll find the 13-pin SIO port, the parallel port, RCA video output, the switch for selecting between video output channel, the 40-watt power input, and the power switch. 40-watt power supply. We should see if this thing gets hot enough to fry an egg on the keyboard. Now for the ratings. Rarity gets a 2 out of 5. This system sold pretty well, but I would say that the 800XL is far more common but they're basically the same system, so... Price gets a five out of five. You can get some killer deals on this system if you don't buy a nice complete in-box example like we did for an unboxing video. Aesthetics get a three out of five. The chrome look is nice, but the rest of the system is a bit dull. Software gets a five out of five. There's a very good amount of software available for this system, though some older Atari 400 and 800 software won't be compatible. Ease of repair gets a four out of five. There are a good amount of resources available for this system. Schematics are easy to find, though repair parts are not as common. With how cheap these systems are, it may be worth it to just buy a new system if something goes wrong. All right, well, thank you for watching this video on the Atari 600 XL. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe, let us know what computer you'd like to see covered next time, maybe some more Atari stuff, and I'll see you guys next time.